Hi everybody, Father Bill Holtzinger here, and this is your Friday Reflection. Well, last week you didn't have one, or I didn't produce one, so you're wondering what happened. Well, I wasn't feeling well. So because I wasn't feeling well, I thought, well, I'm not really up for giving a, a podcast or a Friday Reflection, or in fact, all I could muster up was a blog, a blog post, which was basically what you read in last week's bulletin. Yay! Or was it this week's bulletin? Anyhow, <clears throat> it doesn't really matter. But I was down with a cold, and that, that's the scoop for that. So, this coming weekend, and I'm recording on Wednesday, there's likely a storm coming in, uh, very likely with some snow. And I want to reiterate kind of the, the sensibilities for Catholics about going to Mass and what to do when there's inclement weather. So, for in general, Mass is a holy day of obligation. It's always a solemnity and expected that Catholics would be coming to Mass and receiving the Eucharist the whole bit. If it is snowing and you're not a driver in the snow, you may want to think twice about this. If you're really experienced in the snow and snow is not a big deal, then you have to discern differently. This is where prudential judgment comes into play. But just be mindful that because of weather, you need to ask, is this safe for me? Do I have the ability to get there? Some people can walk. I can walk to the church. So can Father Anthony. I believe that Brett has a four-wheel drive and a pickup at that. I actually put 150 pounds of sandbags in my the back of my vehicle whenever there is winter because I don't know what will happen, and that adds or that adds traction to my my tires if I do have to drive somewhere because you never know. So you need to make that decision for yourself. We will be streaming the mass at 9:30. That is our goal, and that's how we typically would do. But the nice thing is looking like Sunday is going to be clear. Again, you will know more than I will because you're probably watching this on Friday, maybe even Saturday, and I'm talking Wednesday night right now. But nonetheless, forecasts do change. Be mindful of what's going on. Uh, we will be having Masses on Saturday evening, and we will be having Masses on Sunday morning as per usual. And that also goes with daily Masses, and that's the typical general guideline that we offer, and it's really the Church's guideline about Mass attendance and inclement weather. Well, Moving on now to this weekend, I'll be giving the homily, and I'd ask that you pray for me. We'll be hearing from, in the Old Testament, 1 Samuel chapter 2, the calling of Samuel. Now, what I do, I do want to give some background, so because I can't really speak about a lot of things in the homily. We have a really discreet amount of time to offer the homily, but there is some background that might add to what I might be sharing because it's not yet fully uh, locked down. But here's the deal. Eli was not actually the father of Samuel. Eli did have two sons, and I'll get to them in a second. But you might remember the story, Hannah. She was barren. She prayed to God, um, and Eli saw her praying, and she revealed that she was praying for a, a firstborn son. And... And Eli prayed also back that she would be given what her heart desires, basically. And what happens is she does become pregnant, and she bears a son, and that is Samuel. Then part of her deal, though, she kind of cut with God, was that if you allow me to have a firstborn son, I will give him to the temple permanently for life to give worship and help people worship God. And that's what she does. Now imagine that. Can you imagine giving your firstborn son or any child, your firstborn child, to some other person. That's what she did. She made a promise, and she was so grateful. We don't hear her, like, lamenting, but she was so grateful that she does do this. And she then gives the child under the care of Eli. So really, there is no relationship between these two people other than this, this vow that she took, and she's following with it, and then so does, and so does Eli. So you will pick up the story a little bit later with Eli talking to Samuel, because Samuel hears God calling. He's not used to hearing God, so he's not sure what it is. We'll hear about that in the scriptures this weekend. But I want to let you know about who Eli was a little bit, and what kind of parent he was, and what kind of sons he had. So I'm not going to make a lot of commentary, but I will like to, I would like to read from the Bible here. This is, again, 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 12 and on to about like 26. 
And by the way, this is from the New American Bible translation, and it's not the newer one, so um, it's maybe a little clunky. I apologize if I kind of goof it up because it uh, doesn't read as I am used to reading. So this is chapter er, chapter 2, verse 12, and it's entitled, The Wickedness of Eli's Sons. So there you got it, right? Here we go. Now the sons of Eli were wicked. They had respect neither for the Lord nor for the priest's duties towards the people. When someone offered a sacrifice, the priest's servant would come with a three-pronged fork while the meat was still boiling and would thrust it into the basin, kettle, cauldron, or pot. Whatever the fork brought up, the priest would keep. That is how all Israelites were treated who came to the sanctuary at Shiloh. Now, who are those priests? Yes, those are the two sons. In fact, even before the fat was burned, the priest's servants would come and say to the man offering the sacrifice, give me, some, give me some meat to roast for the priest. He will not accept boiled meat from you, only raw meat. And if the man protested to him, let the, let the fat be burned first, as is the custom, then take whatever you wish. He would reply, no, give it to me now or else I will take it by force. Thus the young men sinned grievously, grievously in their presence of the Lord. They treated the offerings to the Lord with disdain. Now, I'm going to skip now to verse 22. It's called Eli's futile rebuke. So that's what we're going to hear. When Eli was very old, he heard repeatedly how his sons were treating all Israel and that they were having relations with the women serving at the entry of the, tent, of the meeting tent. So he said to them, Why are you doing such things? No, my sons, you must not do these things. It is not a good report that I hear from the people of the Lord spreading about you. If a man sins against another man, one can intercede for him with the Lord. But if a man sins against the Lord, who can intercede for him? But they disregarded their father's warning, since the Lord had decided on their death. Meanwhile, young Samuel was growing in stature and in worth in the estimation of the Lord of, of the estimation of the Lord and of men. They disregarded their father's warning, since the Lord had decided on their death. Um, this is kind of strange kind of wording, but basically, the Lord has already decided that the, the family of Eli are doomed. Now remember, Samuel is not part of that family because you can hear he's actually going a different direction. It's amazing then that Samuel then does grow up and he does some amazing things. He is instrumental with Saul and David. And I'll leave you with that. You can read more about that in 1 Samuel and go on. But... This is the background of a father we're talking about. He was so lax in his, his bringing up of his kids that they did not respect him at all. And this ultimate disrespect ends in their death and later in Eli's death as well. Okay, so that's the, that's not, not exciting, but it does say something about, gosh, where are we, right? How are we, are we being respectful to the Lord ourselves? Uh, I think we could all, myself included, could use a gut check and say, well, am I being sometimes irreverent? Uh, am I being uh, unfaithful in my words or actions? Well, we do know this, that the Lord loves us, and he's always willing to re receive us if we ask for forgiveness. And that's what that does not happen for these individuals. They do not ask for that. In fact, Eli, when told what would happen to them, by Samuel, because God spoke to Samuel about what would happen to them. Eli said, I want to know. Tell me. Do not you know, hold back. He tells them the whole thing. And it's amazing what uh, Eli says here. This is now in chapter 3, uh, 1 Samuel. So Samuel told him everything and held nothing back. Eli answered, He is the Lord. He will do what he judges best. Okay. Well, there you go. So that's the background for this coming weekend's homily. And I'd ask that you'd help and pray for me so that I can put something together that is cogent and precise and 
helpful and compassionate, especially for those who are parents who struggle. I know a lot of parents struggle. Um, I think about when people sometimes will say, well, being a priest has got to be the hardest thing in the world. I'm like, well, actually being a parent is much harder than anything I've had to do. So parents, you have my great respect. And in fact, that's what we try to do is we try to respect and partner with you in our school. And as a pastor, when you come to me talking about things that are about your family, and I just know that every parent has got struggles. It is not easy. Come then this weekend, and I hope you'll be able to find consolation if you're amongst those who do struggle in this way. You know, none of our kids are perfect. We are not perfect parents. I'm not a perfect person either. We are to strive and to just rely on God. God can make straight with crooked lines, and we all do draw crooked, crooked lines in our own lives. I'll talk to you this weekend. God bless you. Bye-bye.